All right, today for your viewing and listening pleasure, I'm going to review a topic that we just had on our last standards assessment. This was standard three, which dealt with scale factors and proportional relationships. Here we have two triangles. They are similar. What does this mean in this context or in this situation? As we've learned in class, what similar means is same shape and different size. Okay. Remember if they are if they happen to be same shape and same size, we would call that congruent. Okay? These two are not congruent, they are similar. One is larger than the other. Okay? Now we can tell that by imagine this one if you kind of flipped it over. If we had it facing this way and kind of flipped it, then I'm going to scribble this on here. It's not going to look great. It would look kind of like that. And then if we shrunk it, it would end up looking like that. So sometimes you have to use your imagination and your creativity to really decide, hey, are these two things similar? The first thing that tells you is this. That means they are both right triangles. They both have a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> and then the second thing that tells you, you know, you flip it over and then shrink it. Could you put it on top of the other one? And in this case, the answer is yes. Plus, I told you right there that they are similar. All right, so that's how you could do it if the problem is not telling you that they are similar. So this is the key here. Same shape, different size, and sometimes you have to be creative in figuring out that they are the same shape. Now let's move on. We want to write and solve proportions to find x and y. <clears throat> now this can be kind of challenging, like I said, because we had to flip it and shrink it to find which sides are corresponding. Let's find the corresponding sides to these two shapes. Corresponding means, as we talked about in class, we have to have a similar or congruent shape, which we have, these two are similar, and the side or the angle or any other piece of one has to be in the same relative place on the other. Same relative place meaning after we flip it and shrink it and move it and get it lined up the same way, the corresponding side will be in the same place. Here we go. I can tell that 4 and 14 are corresponding. So there's a ratio, but wait a minute, I made a mistake. Did you catch that? We always go copy on top of original, don't we? Every time we have a problem dealing with scale factor or proportion or corresponding sides, we always go copy on top of original. And since this drawing up here tells me this is copy, 14 is copy, 4 is original, and those are two corresponding sides. I can tell because it's the bottom side, it's connected to this 90 degree angle. Can you find another pair of corresponding sides? Well, we have the long side that goes along with that 90 degree angle, right? We have a Y over here on the copy and a six on the original. So let's just write those down. This is a good strategy to just make sure you understand what you're dealing with before you solve these proportions, okay? And finally, we have a 28 on the copy. And once again, if I flip it and shrink it, I can see that the 28 corresponds with the X. It's the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We go copy on top of original. So those are my three pairs of corresponding sides. Corresponding, big word. We love that word. It's very meaningful to us. All right, now let's take one of these. Let's solve for y. It's the first one here. I take the two ratios, 
and I set them equal. That's what makes it a proportion. Then I cross multiply. I get 4 times y equals 6 times 14, which is 84. Then if I divide both sides by the coefficient, 4, what I get is 21 is the value for y. I'll go back up here to my original drawing so you can see that. <clears throat> That's how we solve that. Pretty simple. Once you set up the corresponding sides, copy on top of original and you understand what you're doing, it's simple enough to set up the proportion and solve it. We've done that many times in class. Now I'm going to use the 14 over 4 again, but this time I'm going to use it to solve the 28 over x. Okay, looks like I may run out of room here. I'm going to slide it up real quickly. And what I have is 14x on one side and then I have 28 times 4, 20 times 4 is 80, 8 times 4 is 32, I add them together, that's 112. I'm going to divide both sides by 14. And let's see, if I do a little mental math here, I know that 14 times 10 would be 140, but I only need to get to 112. I know that 14 times 8. 8 times 10 is 80, 8 times 4 is 32, that gets me my answer. I know x equals 8. I'm going to go over here and just say x equals 8. x is the hypotenuse of the original up here. So there I have solved for both x and y using proportions, corresponding sides, copy on top of original, all of those things. Now, one more thing on the uh, test that we talked about was the scale factor. So let's take a moment and deal with the scale factor. What is the scale factor here? Well, if you remember from your toolkit, the scale factor, bam, check that out. The scale factor is the simplified ratio of any pair of corresponding sides. Okay, All I need to do is grab one of those pairs of corresponding sides. We have three of them. doesn't matter which one I choose. Let's see. 14 over 4. Let's take that. If I simplify that, I'm going to bring that down to... 7 over 2. I can call that the scale factor, 7 to 2. Or I could take it one step further and I could say 3.5 to 1. Either one of those is fine. Okay? If you took it down to 3.5 over 1, that would be fantastic. If you left it as 7 to 2 because that's the most you can reduce this fraction and still have whole numbers, that's okay too. I can understand either way. Both are acceptable. Okay? So I've got my scale factor. I'm going to call it three and a half to one. Okay? Then what if there was a question like, what is the what is the area ratio? Keyword here is ratio. We're not asking you to find the area, but I want to know what is the area ratio. If you remember, area ratio is simply the scale factor squared. So since my scale factor, I'm going to go with the 7 to 2 here. That makes more sense in this situation because when I'm squaring it, it's nice to have whole numbers. I know how to deal with them. 7 times 7 2 times 2. That's what squaring means, the number times itself. 49 over 4. That is the scale factor. That's the area ratio. Scale factor squared. Okay, scale factor was 7 to 2. The area ratio is 49 over 4.
<clears throat> that tells me that if we did have the ratio of one of the shapes of the original, and we multiplied it by this, that would give us the area of the new shape. But we're going to save that for another video because this one is already over 10 minutes long. So I'm out of here. Thanks for viewing and good luck on the test. We'll be taking this one at least two more times before the end of the quarter. And I hope this helped.